This episode of The Floor Basement is brought to you by Conuga. Going on February 23rd through the 25th in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Go check them out at Conuga.com. Check out Nightmare Toys for all your horror collectible needs at NightmareToys.com. Hi, I'm Bill Mosley, and you're in the horror basement with Jim Jam and Johnny Leroy. <laughs> Welcome to the Horror Basement, the Tennessee Horror News Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Johnny Leroy, and as always, Jim Jam's here with us. Jim Jam here. All right, guys, uh, as usual, don't forget to follow us on social media, at TN Horror. That's TN Horror News. Yeah. <laughs> nah, just joking. TN Horror News, at TN Horror News, on all social media platforms, Yep. One and day we're coming to MySpace. When, man, if we get that far up in the world, we're we're doing, jamming. Yeah, we're doing things big for sure. And uh, also, as usual, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, Blueberry, Blueberry. What was the other one? We didn't realize what Podbean. Podbean. Yeah, that's it. And also, download the Horror Amino app, guys. Yep. And if you're in Middle Tennessee, go check out Conuga. We'll be there. Come and support us and the horror give, track. A, give a review. You'll get to be a part of the Tennessee Horror News uh, Audience Choice Award yep. for our Horror Short Film Festival. And you'll get a cup. Maybe. If you say hi and say that you've seen Maybe. it on this podcast. Maybe. Yeah. 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 You'll definitely get a cup if you say you watch the podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, um... Also, and a sticker. You got any more stickers? We got yeah, stickers. I got, yeah, I got stickers. Or we got stickers. And CML Entertainment. Yeah, hit him up on the YouTubes. And um, Scurry Face Radio. Yeah, that's the other place. That's what I... When you said the other place, like my mind went blank. And then you said Podbean. No, Scurry Face Radio, scurryface.com. And also, you know, of course, Matt Mary Toys. Check them out. Yep. Um, but who do we got for you for them today? Should we should we uh, make it a surprise? Yeah, we'll make it a surprise. Wait, since we're gonna it, find out we'll anyway. go uh, since it's in the. It is Women of Horror Month, so Women in Horror Month. Yeah, Women in Horror Horror Month. So we're gonna go on that theme and uh, talk to someone that's in a an icon. Definitely an icon. An icon of horror. Oh, I can't do it, but I'm just like. What, what is that? Just, uh, from Sleepaway Camp. I mean, um... Oh, oh. I don't oh. have to edit this, though. <laughs> nah, hell. But, um, yep. Should be a good podcast, guys. We hope you enjoy. And, uh, hit us up. Yep. And away we, we go. go. <laughs> Alright, guys. So, on today's podcast, we have Felissa Rose. It's... <laughs> Hi. How are you? Doing well. Felissa, uh... I've watched all the Hatchet movies. Yesterday and today, mm. he did a bit. Uh, he did a, a marathon of uh, the Hatchet series. And Victor Crowley was a really good movie. And I don't know if you want to talk about how something happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Felissa. Why is it? I guess you always get the 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 shocking. I guess you would say endings to a movie. <laughs> but, I'm I'm thrilled for it. I totally appreciate it. And when I read the script, I was like, this is so incredible. I can't wait to film it. And um, I knew it was going to be shocking. And now, um, fortunately, Adam won four awards from the After Dark Toronto Film Festival. And one of them was, was that sequence. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I can well, imagine. And yeah. Just so everybody's clear, Victor Crowley comes out uh, February 6th, right? Yeah. On video. Yes! On demand. Tuesday! And, yeah, Tuesday. So 
It'll be a day after this podcast goes up, or we're going to launch this Tuesday. Just like a I day think early. we should do, do like it a day earlier. Day. Yeah. Uh, it'll also go up with the review of the Victor Crowley. Yeah. By Yeti. And, and I hope you guys give it a, an amazing review. Well, I really Yeti enjoy Yeti raves it. about it, so yeah, it's an excellent review. I'll send it to you. I got it hid right now, but I'll send it to you, and you can read it now if you want. Oh, cool. Yes. Please. But, but uh, yeah. people ne- definitely need to check this movie out because if you any of the Hatchet movies, they're so bloody and just so over the top. Like it's bloody just, good time, right? Yeah, a bloody good, th- bloody good Tom. <laughs> um, <clears throat> How they, yeah, I feel like they get you. That opening scene um, is just so. I think it's so hilarious and amazing. I feel like the movie grabs you from the very start and just takes you on this relentless, you know, this ride that's just so fun and gory and brutal and crazy and hilarious, all of that. He really captured all of that in this one. I'm I'm so proud to be a part of it. I can't even explain it because it's so fun. Like, I have loved a lot of the movies I've made. There are some that... Or crappy, and but <laughs> when you do something like this, where I've been a fan of both Adams and of of Hatchet, the whole franchise, you you know it's just like you can't wait to shout from the rooftops like I'm in this, I'm in, and especially with the whole secret, that yeah. was like I'm still telling people how I felt the moment he told me that I was going to be in this, like cried like a baby i was so blown away that's what i, was, so I wanted to ask like the, the the secret of it like he like i read up on some of it and he had people come out and audition for like some bakery movie <laughs> like they were yeah it was, it's haunted well, bakery called and, oh, arwin's revenge arwin's fancy yeah. dinner was the original yeah when people auditioned and then um <clears throat> and then some of us were called in um individually and I remember, you know, he called me, Adam called me, and he said, you know, would you like to do the podcast, you know, the movie clip? And I'm like, yes, oh, my gosh. He said, and also, I wanted to talk to you about this other project. And, you know, all I could think was, what? Like, I would freaking bring this man coffee. What is this about, you know? <laughs> um, not even thinking in a million years it could be a hatchet movie. I just thought it was a new film that he was doing, and, wow, if I could have even a small little, you know, part of it, I would just freak out. So when I met him at, at his studio at Aeroscope, you know, we sat down, and he's like, hey, how are you? I'm like, oh, good. And, you know, at this point, we were friends, and we'd done Scary Sleepover, and I just have tremendous respect for him. So, you know, anything he says, I'm like, ah, oh, just in awe. And then he um, said, well, I, I wrote a part for you, and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, hmm. and it's hatchet four. And I was like, just fell to the ground. And I was like, tears coming down. Like, because, you know, we all have dreams, right? You yeah. know? Oh, yeah. And like, when you actually see a dream coming true, I mean, this was seriously a dream. I remember wanting, I wished I had been a part of, like, when I saw hatchet the first time, it was like, it blew my mind. I, it, to me, it changed the game a lot. It changed, it was, very uh, innovative, and um, I remember just always wanting to work with him. So here we are, ten years later. And I like us, and another iconic role, I believe. For What's sure. that? I said another iconic role, I believe. Oh, uh, I thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think I think you know Victor Crowley is definitely the character. Victor Crowley is. I think this. You know, our, our, you know, serial killer that just kind of like, he's, he's amazing. My son can't even look at him. <laughs> that's how scary he is. So I think he's created something that's really phenomenal. Yeah, I say in, uh, in person too, it's probably very intimidating, isn't it? <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm friends with Kane and then to see him in that, you know, in that makeup and in that character, he sits off to the side and he listens to metal music. <laughs> and, you know, it's terrifying because it's mostly night shooting. So you're, you yeah. know, you're more vulnerable when it's like really dark out and it's cold and you're 
kind of like all huddled up with the rest of the cast and you know it's your turn. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, it was crazy. That would be weird. Like it's like, okay, this is my turn to get killed. You know, like, this, <gasps> like, oh uh, then I don't know how many shots you get at it. Like I, as far as on a movie set. I got two. Two. See, yeah. See, that'd be, it'd be like, well, you, we got limited number of shots you can do. Like, <laughs> That'd be mm-hmm. kind of stressful. Like, I mean, you got to hit it and you got to make it count, which you did. You have to make it count. And, you know, but the thing is, Adam is such an amazing director because, you know, the the dialogue between himself and the actor is so strong. And he really, you know exactly what he needs and what he wants from you. So it's like not only the setting, so the location where you're at, the setting, and then you have Victor Crowley behind you. It's like um, you just, anyone would flip out and freak out. And, I mean, I was genuinely crying for my scene because it was, I don't want to give too much away for people who haven't even seen it, you know, when they listen, if, you know, when they hear this. But um, the the circumstances that I was put in, it's hilarious, yeah. it's funny with my high heels. But... <laughs> But it wasn't funny when you're actually doing it. So. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, because what's that? <clears throat> and I'm so excited that we're talking about this because as much as I love Sleepaway Camp, it's like my, you know, the love of my life. It's really nice to finally have like a movie where people are like super excited and interested and want to hear about it. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I might cut this because I don't want to have a spoiler in it, but I want to go ahead and ask. How did the did he put like a severed arm in your mouth or something for that scene or was yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Yeah, I had to ask that. Wait, say that again. Did he what? Put like a fake arm or did you have a fake arm in your mouth to shoot that last scene in the close up? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. Or did they do like back in the day like make a whole different like a like a mold of your head maybe? It was yeah, it's both. Okay. It's both. Because you have the long shot and you have the close up. And then you have the other part, if you recall, at the window of the plane where I fall into it. Yeah. And so that wasn't me, though. That was the life cast. Okay. You know, where you just see the mouth and the hand and the, yeah. I and I'm, I'm lucky because I know that it's like Kane's second favorite kill, I think he said. Oh, really? <laughs> now, I don't, his uh, other, his favorite kill was when he, uh, I think he ripped the woman's head in half. Yes, and that's I such a that. fantastic kill. But I remember when he, uh, and that's for the Hatch movies, but when he knocked that dude's head off in Friday the 13th, when he knocked his block off, <laughs> to me, I would never yeah, forget that. Yeah. That's his when most Jason goes to Manhattan, when he, knocked, that's like, dude, he just he's knocked his block off. He's had some pretty spectacular kills. Yes. I mean, you know, he had some brutal master. kills in this, yeah. though. Yeah. And Hatchet franchise, I think they're, they seem more brutal in, to me than the Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just because I think so, the and I think the they're arms, a lot more compelling. Like, yeah, like and it's yeah, they're a lot more yeah. um, creative yes. and a lot more like almost each one has their own little story around it, you know. And like when it happens, you're just so blown away because it's so graphic, and you know, Victor and and just the character that came that you know he is very iconic that the way he you know, has created Victor in the way he kills people. It's, so, it's like this massive, you know, just his face. I mean, I'm I'm having nightmares right now thinking about that face. <laughs> um, it's like really, it's, it's one of a kind. I mean, it's incredible. It's very intense. Yeah, because when I was watching the movie, I was, you know, really paying attention to Kane and just the way he moved <gasps> yeah. and the way, like, he would do something. I was just like, dude, he... Like, he just, you could tell he got it. Like, it was just, you know, he was really, he was really into that character. And I was just like, man, this is freaking he awesome. He is. He's really into it. And he spent like, so awesome. a lot of time in that very heavy makeup. I, I mean, the head weighs, I don't, I can't remember if they said 30 pounds or 40 pounds. It's very heavy. No wonder Kane's and, neck is uh, massive. <laughs> yeah, I know. He has, like, these weights on him. Um, <clears throat> but he... He takes his characters very seriously. I mean, oh, yeah. not to bring up like another film, but Death House is coming out soon. Oh, yes. And that's really Kane's movie. And he's a 
freaking amazingly talented man, you know, he you'll see a whole different side to him in Death House. Oh yeah, oh, yeah because we're going to get to see him outside of makeup. Yep. For yeah. Sure. I mean, so you it's see like Kane. A, yeah, exactly. you get to see Kane and you get to you know, he has a lot of dialogue. I mean, he's the lead, you know, character in that film. And we're so looking forward to it. Of course, we've been pushing that film for, I guess, two years now. Yeah. Quite <laughs> and, a while. But unfortunately, when that film comes out to theater, we'll be in Chattanooga at a convention. It just so happens to fall on the same weekend that, we, yeah. that we're going to be out of town. <clears throat> and it won't be in the town that we're going to be in. Yeah, in the city. It's like, man. I was, I was, I was telling... Uh, Harrison. Harrison, yeah. Mind my blank. Yeah, I was telling Harrison, hey, can we get a screener at Con Nova? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it won't happen, but worth a try. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> I want to say, you, uh, so, um, you know, Johnny brought up this on the phone call the other day. <clears throat> we're going to have to make an annual. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to make it because exactly a year today we interviewed you. Well, it's Big Game oh, really? Sunday. We interview you on Big Game Sunday, apparently, it seems like. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Look you're going to be our Big Game. Big Game Sunday. Big Game <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> interview. Interview. So. That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I love it. I love that. Thank you. I, I, I realized that. I was like, dude, you realize that we, we interviewed her last year at the same time on this, like. Don't say that word. Yeah. We're not supposed to say. You know. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. One year ago. So, yeah. So, so but, yeah. Next, and I uh, couldn't tell you about. I couldn't tell you about Hatchet. No. 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 Nope. I think we asked you like, anything you're working on? Well, there's some stuff. <laughs> Did I say that? Probably. I'm sure. I was. Oh my gosh! It was so. It was one year, just about one year that we had to keep that secret from That'd when be a we hard wrapped until. Secret. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because people it would be was, like, well, you're working with Adam Green, like the people that knew you, right? Did they know that she's working no, with you? No, I could. I never said anything about oh, working wow. with Adam. I just said that I uh, did Scary Sleepover with him, and I I had done um, the the podcast, and I had also done the charity where we um, did the 48-hour marathon, oh, and I was part of the Goonies reading. I played Mama Fratelli. Oh, from really? the original Chris Columbus. I'm gonna have to script. go back. Yeah. Because oh. I, I, I listened to the movie crate or movie crypt, sorry, and uh, I've I listened to a few episodes and I've watched your sleepover, the scary sleepover, and that was amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I remember That's hearing. That's where he got Adam. Actually, for the first time when we were in Nashville together in October, he said that's where he came up with the character of Kathleen that I played because I was imitating the New York managers that I worked with. Like, okay, so let me talk to you about. He's like, <laughs> oh, he started to like that was a- envision this publicist, you know, Perry Shen's publicist, yeah. Andrew Young, in the in the movie, and. Um, that's when it started to become like a, um, you know. It's a funny character. Creation in his head. Uh, uh, yeah. is she's funny, isn't she? Funny? Yeah. I had the best time <laughs> playing her. She and I got a... to work so closely with Perry, and I love him. So that was, you know, all of it. And Dave Sheridan, isn't he hilarious? <laughs> he yeah. cracks me up in the movie. <laughs> what are your scenes? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess you pop out like I guess you're so, in the movie. You're so messed up on pills. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you wake up, are we there or so something like that? Up. It was yeah. It was definitely it was funny. Well, it was so funny. Would you like? I didn't even know what half those things were. I had to keep asking everybody. How do I say? I still don't know. Di- dilaud, dilaudid, dilaudid. I don't know. It was funny to me, but all of this. You know, all this junk that she has. And then when the plane crashes, they kept throwing pills around, like the props department. <laughs> so every time we'd walk in and out of the plane, you'd see all my pills all over the, in the water. It was pretty hilarious. Yeah, I was surprised but, uh, to see And you. Tiffany, wasn't Tiffany Shep is amazing too? And Laura Ortiz and Crystal Joy oh, Brown. Yes. And the whole cast. It was, was a great so cast. Wonderful and Q from Impractical That's Jokers. What I was ask. He's yes. so I was fantastic. Like, I was like, I, I didn't like. I seen Q. And I was like, oh my god, Brian Quinn. He's in <laughs> yeah. this movie, and I, yes. Impractical Jokers is one of the 
very few shows that I can watch. Over and over, the same freaking episode, so I laugh so hard at them. I know that. Yeah, he's I'm, really funny. Um, great cast. Oh, yeah, it was a super great cast. And just so while you're on here, uh, garlics and gu- garlic and gunpowder. I was wondering. <gasps> yeah. Because Harrison had talked about you being on set and uh, you was in full makeup and people were like, who's that? You know, a hole of a woman. Yeah, who's perfect? that? Who's that crazy woman? Yeah, like, yeah, what I is love her that character. You know, I have to say, as I get older, I'm really, really excited about a lot of the the roles that I've been cast in as of lately. I mean, you know, from Garlic and Gunpowder, and I have this movie coming out, Ugly Sweater Party, where I play this other crazy character, and you know, obviously has it for Victor Crowley. Um, but yeah, in in uh, Garlic, I played this like. You know, 500 pound crazy Ma boss named Ma who just sits and smokes a cigar, can't get off her couch. Hold on, Sam. And uh, just so fun. Hold on, you said 500 pounds, so was you in like a a fat suit, I guess? I was in, it took them four and a half hours to do makeup. Yeah. Whoa. Every day? uh, Are you unrecognizable? Yeah, whenever I was on. Well, okay. uh, Yep. Can you do the voice? When I talked like ma, this would be my ma. I was like, let me tell you something, all right? You yes. are a bitch. That is awesome. Because he said that you had, you were doing the voice and people just did not know it. I was just like, I want to oh, hear Oh, people the voice had no so idea. Like, we had this catering guy and um, he, re- you know, he knew me. I had hired him and he only knew me, you know, obviously as me. As, because I was um, an associate producer on the film. So... So he and I, you know, we're friendly and whatnot. His name was Daniel. And one day when I was on as Ma, I, I had just finished makeup and I came, we were in a sound stage and I came out of the room where they had, you know, done all my makeup. And when I came out, I said, hey, Daniel, how you doing? And he was like, um, hello, ma'am. How, how are you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I was like, you're making very good food for us. I really appreciate it. And he was like, turn to me. The rest of the crew was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> They're like, it's Felissa. I'm like, hi, Daniel. He's like, no what? And then another friend of mine played one of the mob guys, and he came on at the end. And I was standing outside just talking to somebody. And I was like, hey, you know. And he's like, uh, hi. And to the, I just saw him last week. He's like, I'll never forget when I first saw you as Ma. I could somewhat see your eyes, but I had no idea who you were. <laughs> so it was great makeup by wow. by Soda Effect. They, so they did a fantastic job. Well, well, we can't wait to see it. And um, yeah, oh, I'm thank really you. Yeah, I'm really proud that of that movie. We had a ball. Sounds like you great had a ball. And I'm yeah, like uh, like I said, we'll have to get you on in a year. Uh, That's <laughs> right. Let's see what comes out then. Yeah, I have yeah. a few things cooking. <clears throat> yeah, well, so. we'll definitely. Well, what about the ugly sweater? Party. Oh, when's it gonna? Oh, I <clears throat> hope that comes out soon because that is just batshit crazy, hilarious about a possessed sweater that someone finds at Goodwill and puts it on for a party, <laughs> and it has the it has the spirit living in it from a serial killer, and it just destroys all of us. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Real, I just brought this up to Jimmy. Real Jim quick, Jam. I know you got to go, but yeah, we had a. I, I guess the, the ghost Facebook were Live, yeah. And Johnny called me drunk one night. It was like, hey, do, do ghosts wear clothes or are they naked? <laughs> well, but oh I was like, God. ghost it's clothes. Different. Like, it could be like where, somebody, where the clothes are possessed. And that's oh the movie. God, that's funny. Yeah, that's, that's the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not unlike Ugly Sweater Party. I want to see that. Oh, well, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. We well, oh, really you appreciate you and um, look forward to thank seeing everything. You. And you have a good... Yeah. Thank you. Have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, you right. too. Thank you. Too. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, talk to you soon. All right, bye. 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 All right, guys. So that was Felissa Rose. We had a short interview. She had some stuff to do, which is a okay with us. We appreciate it. Hell yeah. Since it's because it was a good interview, and you got to hear a lot about Victor Crowley. Yep. And some of her other stuff that she's working on, and. I definitely want to check out Ugly Sweater Party because, well, 
I had the same idea. But, but ugly sweater party would that that be like a ugly Christmas? Oh, I think sweater. I'm assuming so. But uh, or, yeah. but then I picture like a cheerleader for some reason wearing the cheerleader sweater. I don't know why. I don't know. But that was. I have to look it up and see. But that was a fun episode. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed it and uh, yeah. But we can, we're going to keep going. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's only 20 minutes. <laughs> Let's talk about Hatchet. Yeah, what did you think about it? Oh, I really enjoyed the movies. And this was my first time seeing all of them because, well, I'm still new at the whole horror movie stuff. Newer than most people. Most people have had a lifetime of it. Had, what, two and a half years mm -hmm. of that? If that. Not even two and a half, probably. I don't know. But Hatchet, man, what a... Like, the first one's really funny. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to have to rewatch it again, though. Well, it was... it was. I think it had more comedy in the first one than it did in the, the, the later. The latter, or whatever, however you want to say. <laughs> you notice that the, the main girl got swapped? Oh, yeah. First to second? Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Oh, well, we talk about that. Me and Adam talked about that in my interview with him. Oh yeah. Yeah. What was his? Why did he change? Uh, apparently, she got bad advice from her uh, agent manager, that uh, wanting more money because they saw how much Hatchet took off. So oh, that Adam was, amazing, was like, man. "Fuck that," you know. And Danielle was. Yeah. yeah. If you can't accept the role that you're going to be in, I mean, you could have brought it further. Apparently, though, they're friends, though. It's just, yeah. you got bad advice is all it was. Well, I mean, that'll happen with someone. Like, you got someone in your, oh, no, you can get more money out of it. Well, then you lose the role. And then lose it to an icon, icon like Daniel. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. The other thing is like, well, you're never getting that back. <laughs> that's cool. I was kind of surprised. Well, Once she did, sh oh, shit, I need to shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Victor Crowley. Yeah, I was waiting, yeah. on, waiting yeah. to see her, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I was too. I was like, because she didn't die in the third one, did she? No, she she got stabbed in the side by the tree. <laughs> the tree stabbed her. Well, yeah, I, mean, I have to rewatch it because. But remember, he picked her up and he pushed her on the tree, and she broke the urn on him. Okay, I guess. yeah. And <laughs> the only reason why I know all this is because I just watched them all. He watched all days. four of them. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I had to. I, went, I was like, I gotta watch all these. I, I was looking them up, like trying to find if they had like a collection, like a DVD. They don't. There's not a th there's not a box set. Why is there not a fucking box set? I'm wondering if what up, Adam? That's Adam said uh, <laughs> that different companies own different the different yeah, ways. Oh yeah, they say that's the yeah because you got one person that owns it and then one person. That so owns they wouldn't be able to come to. They'd have to, I guess, sit down and have a meeting and. Somebody would have to buy the rights off with somebody else, yeah. and they're probably not one to do that. I, I, not I, right now. I, that's what if you watch our uh, interview from Full Moon Tattoo and Horror Festival, I interviewed Adam. He explains why that is. Mm. So Johnny, if you would watch it, sorry, I was at shows the table. shows. Look, he don't even watch his own our own stuff. Well, because it was part of our podcast that we did. But you didn't witness it though, so you should have. You didn't show it to me. It's on YouTube. Oh, I gotta go on. I have to go on the YouTubes. Yes. To watch our own stuff. <laughs> Can't just show it to me. Yeah. Outside of YouTube. No, hell no. We gotta get more views on the YouTubes. Yep, on the YouTubes. Yeah, we need to get some views up so we can get monetization again. Cause We're never gonna get monetization. You gotta have over a thousand views or five thousand or ten thousand views. Or so, something. hey everybody, go check out our YouTube channel. Because YouTube has destroyed small time people. Yep. Pretty much from what they said. So like look 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 watch this, watch this. So fuck YouTube. Well, I mean, I guess. We're doing videos now, so I love you YouTube. Well, uh we'll figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not gonna, making money off of them anyways. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're not making money off of us. We're we're gonna we let's push this to Vimeo. Vimeo, yeah. Because only everybody would use it. Anyway, it don't matter. But yeah, the Hatchet movies, man, they're all good. Like, that's what, it's kind of unusual. 
Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like in crazy a movie for like a, like, well, independent horror. But it's even, not crazy because a lot of the movies. But will, I'm just saying, like movie franchises in general, for every movie to be good, like four movies to be good, because I mean, there's. Well, well, besides the Batman trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy. Really well, Adam Green is a. I think he's an exceptional director. Exceptional yeah. director. Because you know, there's some like Friday the Thirteenth movies that, eh, you know, they're uh, you know, not as good. Eh, boring kind of. Yeah, and then, which of course you had way, but see, Adam stayed on for all of these movies. I think that probably makes the difference too. Is What's, he, he because cre- Friday the Thirteenth? You know how many different freaking writers and directors they've had. Yeah, well, he created this. Yeah, this that's what I mean. So that's yeah. probably why it's the same consistency. You get the same thing, like, and which makes sense to me now that I say that out loud and think about it. So, yeah, you should watch that though at a scary sleepover. I've watched. I think I've watched a couple of them, but I haven't watched. I, I was the newest one has Felissa. I think it has Danielle. I was going to ask her. Bill Mosley, Sid Haig. If she's ever been <clears> on <throat> one, but she brought it up, so I didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, it was it was, it was a good. Thing. It was funny in video. It kind of. Then there was that one that Adam talked to us about. He did a a short of kind of the what was that show? Ho- Ho- Holliston. Oh, his, Holliston. Yeah, he, he did like uh, for uh, area area scope. Area yeah, scope. Area scope. He did a little short film for it, and um, it was kind of playing off that. But yeah, so yeah, definitely we we're trying to get. I'm trying to get Adam Green to come on the actual podcast and talk to us both. Hopefully, we can get him on here and talk about Victor Crowley. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I'd really enjoy talking about it. Another movie you should watch is Digging Digging the Marrow or Digging in the Marrow. Somewhere around that name. But he made that too. He's actually in the movie. He got that idea from someone sent him a a story and, and he did a movie based off that. Was he not in the, any of these hatchet movies? He I think he did cameos. He was the flight attendant. Yeah, that's what I that's like. The other guy that was with him is the guy that made Mayhem. Oh, okay. Uh, Joe Lynch, the other guy. Yeah, that was Joe Lynch. The flight. No, they were the kind of the. They were the pilots. Yeah, the pilots. Yeah, I thought when I uh, I had to rewind it back and or and I was like, well, shit, that's Adam Green and Joe Lynch. Hell yeah! I thought that was pretty cool. Make a cameo. That was really cool. He he's in the first one as a cameo, and then he was in the second one as a cameo. Yeah, I think he's cameoed in all of them. Might as well, hell. I mean, it is your movie. Stan Lee does cameos in all of Marvel, don't he? Well, he don't own the Marvel movies. Well, I'm just saying he does cameos, though. Yeah, that's because they have them in all of them. But, yeah. I mean, which is cool. Which, I guess this has nothing to do with horror, but Black Panther's coming out this weekend, I believe. This coming weekend, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm actually thinking I want to go see that. Uh, I want to go see that. You can go see it on Sunday? Probably. Probably Sunday, yes. We'll have to arrange that, man. We'll all take That's it. my day to go see movies in the theaters or Sundays. Matinees. Because there's usually there's not as many people there besides for fucking It. Jesus Christ, that place. That's the most packed I've ever seen yeah, a matinee. I saw It twice in theaters. Well, um, I half ass saw it at a drive-in. And then I saw it a lot better in the, in the theater. Which I'm so glad I watched it in the regular theater. Yeah, that's a movie you got to watch in a regular theater. You can't watch that. I don't think you can watch a scary movie really in a drive-in because you don't get the same effect to me. Well, you got too much shit if, going on. If you had, if the movie takes place in the woods and stuff, it's perfect though. It kind of gives yeah. it a creepier feel. But and if you had actors going around tapping on people's cars, that, they said that they was gonna do that at this drive-in, you know. But it's just too much, too fucking much chaos. They brought that back just for that movie, pretty much. Oh really? That 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 drive in was shut down, and they brought that sh- uh, drive in back just for the, it, and to do a little haunted woods, which huh. you know props for I mean, giving but, it a shot. Yeah, I mean hell, you got. If try. they do it again next year, you know they saw what they need to work on. Yeah, I won't. Anyways, yeah, I won't do it again. But 
not going to that. I'm not driving that far. That's the only thing. I had to drive about an hour and a half to do that. It was a waste of time. Oh, what else is in the horror news? Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space 3D. The, the Return. 3D. Is it going to be a 3D movie? I believe so. Oh, shit. And I'm not sure if it's going to be like old school 3D with, with the red and the blue. Well, it has to be. If you want people to watch it like that, it has to be because not everybody has a 3D TV. Well, I mean, but I, I guess. I don't know. That's like, what I don't understand. Why can't they make it? Why do you have to have a fucking 3D TV or a damn Blu-ray player that's 3D capable? Why can't it just be formatted where no, you can just get the glasses? Is that, that's just The way that they would do it is it would be the red and the blue glasses that you'd have to that wear. That would be so much better because then you can, like, when you buy yeah, the DVD, you get the... You, did you ever go to a 3D movie with the red and the blue? Yes. Yeah, I did. Not that great. I mean, the effects, not this. Well, it would be I mean, perfect for Killer Clowns because... It oh, well, yeah, that, that, I'm thinking of the throwback of it. Yeah, that would be awesome. But like, also, though, I'd, DVD, like to see, I'd like to see it in regular... Not, I hope to God they shoot it regular as well, like not 3D, just so you can watch the movie and you don't have to wear a fucking glasses to watch it. I almost bet, man, if it's a, if it's a independent, you know, I'm sure it's not going to be a big budget movie. It's probably not going to be 3D. It can't be. No, that's what, well, damn. That's, what the, that's what they're saying on the interwebs. The know. internet's the same. Huh. I, but I'm looking forward to we'll it. We'll have a... But, see, you won't like it because, you know, the first one was PG-13, so... Hmm. I watched the first one and I enjoyed it. Mm, no, PG-13 horror movie, guys. PG-13. This guy over here don't like PG-13 horror movies. They suck, mostly. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. The gate was three PG-13. I was a kid. That's a nostalgia movie. <laughs> Just say that bird fly, buddy. I was gonna buy that. I want to buy that movie. The gate, and, yeah. Because I mean, you know, you can get it off Amazon. I don't know. I looked it up, but I mean, like, even like Killer Clowns, or something. like even Killer, if fucking shipping wasn't so high for movies. Like six I got bucks. Killer Clowns over there somewhere. They somewhere on VHS. They got them. Uh, look at them all. Them right there. Attack the Wu Tang. Oh no, I'm just kidding. Wu Tang, wrong turn. <laughs> but yeah. All right, well. You really trying to end this? I'm never trying to end it. You, you are today. Like, all right, well, uh, I guess it's time to. <laughs> like, we're... Nah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm just fucking with Jim Jam now. Uh, no, but uh, it's Women in Horror Month, guys. So uh, we're working on trying to get the Hell's Bells of Tennessee Horror News, trying to get a little picture set going in the theme of that. That'll be Tennessee Horrors Horror News's own models or whatever. Women in Horror. They're all bloody. So yeah, Try, right. I'm working on that. But, um, but yeah, go check out the women in horror, you know, like make this month for yeah. watching movies with, you know, women leads and, you know, women protagonists. Especially independent horror. Yes. And go check out Victor Crowley. February 6th. Because, man. You will enjoy it thoroughly. It is very enjoy and so bloody. And then Felicia's There's some really death. great kills. So, yeah, Felicia's death scene is... Superb. There's some really good kills in this movie. I enjoyed it a lot. But, you know, there's going to be another one. And then, I liked how all the Hatchet movies, like, where it would end, you know, it come right back to that same scene in the next movie. Like, you don't see that a whole lot in movies anymore. Well, they usually pick up from somewhere else. So. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> so it's all in the timeline. It's really cool. No, I think the fourth one takes place a while later. Well, it's ten years, but it's still in timeline. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's still... Yeah. But it fit perfectly. That's what... I mean, this whole... Like, but with one writer, it, you know, it goes really well. And also, he did this movie because George A. Romero and Wes Craven told him, yeah. look, you need to continue making Hatchet movies. Do it for the fans. So, I mean, that you have them two telling you to do movies. Yeah, you have legends in the horror... The ki- 
a couple kings of horror, I guess you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, and they're telling you, dude, continue. That's like, holy shit. you you got to listen. Yeah, you'd be a fool um, not to. Yeah, especially with their track record and that. Just th- them. Right. Speaking of that, you know, this comes out on Wednesday, Tuesday. Well, today, which is Sunday, when we record this, it is George A. Romero's birthday. Yeah. He would have been, I don't, can't remember how, I'm sorry. But yeah, it would have been his birthday today. Well, I guess you could still say it is. Yeah. But we wish him a happy birthday, even though he's not with us no more, unfortunately. Yeah. But hopefully he's got the undead all around him. Yeah, I guess. Maybe he'll come back to us. At the ghost? I don't know. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, I'll cut that out. I'm not being sensitive. But yeah, anyways, appreciate it. Appreciate everything. And hit us up on all the social media platforms and the YouTubes. Like this, share you know, it, YouTube. subscribe to it. Like, you know, help us out. For sure. Share this out to all your buddies. Oh, shizzle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what I got to deal with. Let's, let's see. Damn. He's a really good guy, though. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny's an asshole. Yeah. So, yeah, we appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Okay. Guess that's all we got. <laughs> we out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get on that. See y'all. See ya.